Item hashtag SCP-1129 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-1129 is to be contained in a 3MX3MX3M chamber in the high security wing of Site-83. Due to the nature of SCP-1129, no direct or first-degree indirect viewing methods, such as observation windows or cameras, are allowed within the containment chamber except as authorized by a level 4 or higher researcher. Visual contact with SCP-1129, whether direct, indirect or recorded, is not allowed except under strictly controlled experimental conditions. SCP-1129's continued presence and status is monitored by ultrasound, as the image produced does not cause the effects typical of observing SCP-1129. Knowledge of SCP-1129's effects is non-essential for any personnel with less than level 4 security clearance. Personnel assigned to the research, containment, security, or other support teams associated with SCP-1129 are to be sequestered from the other personnel at Site-83 until such time as they have been removed from the assignment and have completed the debriefing and clearance procedures. If any personnel at Site-83, whether assigned to SCP-1129 or not, begin to exhibit the Stage I or Stage II symptoms described below, they are to be administered Class B amnestics immediately and must receive a psychological examination to determine the severity of after effects, with further psychological treatment made available as necessary. If a member of assigned personnel is deemed unnecessary to the continued containment of SCP-1129, they may be transferred to another project so long as they had no direct exposure to SCP-1129. Prior to transfer, all personnel who have been assigned to SCP-1129 must successfully complete a memory restructuring following treatment with Class A amnestics. At that point, they must complete a minimum two-week quarantine period to be certain that they do not manifest Stage I or Stage II symptoms. Description, SCP-1129 is a large object of apparently biological origin. Its composition is largely unknown, as it seems to flow past any and all objects that approach it, temporarily breaking apart and changing its own dimensions as needed. Due to this, only one sample has ever been obtained, which showed the presence of several amino acids and hormone analogues consistent with terrestrial life, but no DNA samples were detected. Based on longitudinal ultrasound recordings, it appears that SCP-1129 is dimensionally fractal in nature, with a partial existence in a theoretical 3.333 rd spatial dimension. Based on behavior, it is presumed that SCP-1129 is sentient, although this is unconfirmed. When any sentient being makes visual contact with SCP-1129, they will immediately enter stage I, which is characterized by an extremely heightened flight reflex. They will attempt to flee from SCP-1129 by any means possible, ignoring obstacles and personal injury. Point one human subjects have later described this as having been overcome with intense fear and unthinking hysteria. Stage I symptoms will increase in intensity so long as the subject remains within 23.3 meters of SCP-1129 or remains in direct line of sight of SCP-1129. Stage I symptoms will persist for several HOURS2 after the affected being has left the immediate range of effect of SCP-1129. If the affected subject is unable to leave the range of effect, they will exhibit increasingly frantic behaviors until finally expiring. Post-mortem examinations reveal that the cause of death is typically cardiac arrest or the equivalent, consistent with a prolonged heightened state of fear and stress. Once a subject has recovered from stage I symptoms, they will immediately proceed to stage 2. Stage 2 is characterized by heightened aggression and hostility towards SCP-1129. Human subjects experiencing these symptoms invariably describe SCP-1129 as wrong, not the right kind of real, not fitting here, etc., and incredibly dangerous. They will express a strong desire to destroy it immediately by any means possible. 
If the animal or human subject to stage 2 symptoms is not able to convince others to assist them in destroying SCP-1129, they will attempt to do so on their own, up to and including breaching containment on SCP-1129 or other SCP items believed to possibly be useful in the destruction of SCP-1129. If multiple individuals are experiencing stage 2 symptoms, they will work together in a destruction attempt. Subjects do not display any change in intelligence, skills, or ability to communicate, however, and cross-species cooperation is usually minimized. No other change in behavior or motivation is noted, and subjects experiencing stage 2 symptoms will pause in order to eat or sleep, although they return to their destruction attempts as soon as feasible. However, upon seeing SCP-1129, Subjects will promptly return to stage I with no apparent memory of having experienced it before, beginning the cycle again. This cycle will continue unabated until the subject has either died or been administered amnestics. In approximately 1.7% of cases, a subject will enter stage 3 instead, which is characterized by all voluntary muscles freezing in place. This muscle locking persists despite all treatments, including removal from SCP-1129's range of effect, administration of muscle relaxers, administration of amnestics, and medical destruction of the motor nerves controlling them. To date, the most control of voluntary muscles that has ever been regained was in three individuals who regained control of the eyelids, allowing voluntary blinking, and partial control of the vocal cords. In these cases, Amnestics were successful in eradicating the stage I and stage 2 symptoms. Video feeds and photographs of SCP-1129 produce an identical effect, though artist renditions have no effect. Despite this profound observational cognitohazard effect, SCP-1129 seems to be completely harmless otherwise. It has now been determined that transition into stage 2 may be caused by any significant knowledge of the nature of SCP-1129's effects. SCP-1129 is now considered a grade 3 infohazard and has been upgraded to Euclid. See Addendum. Addendum, on April, 19, researchers assigned to SCP-1129 began to share the consensus that SCP-1129 was incredibly dangerous and submitted multiple requests for its decommissioning, which were all denied. A new team of researchers were assigned, but within 30 days, they exhibited the same opinions as the previous team. Subsequent research teams have displayed the same effects, despite updated containment procedures. Teams of researchers are now to be cycled on a bi-weekly basis, as that seems to slow the onset of the infohazard aspect of SCP-1129's effects. Efforts are currently underway to identify and locate all personnel foundation-wide who may have been exposed to information regarding SCP-1129 directly or secondhand, with administration of amnestics and memory restructuring performed as appropriate. As of the date of this report, personnel have been identified and successfully treated. Footnotes 1. This effect is most pronounced in mammals, but has been observed in all animal life, including birds, fish, snails, and insects. Certain sentient anomalies, however, are not affected. 2. The exact length of time varies considerably from individual to individual, with an average of 4 hours. Item